welcome to Wednesday in the Word. Calvary family and friends, I trust and pray that uh, as we come into your homes, as we uh, ride along with you in your car, or as we meet you wherever you are, I trust and pray that you are tip-top terrific and that all is well with you and your family. It's a joy to be able to gather with you and to uh, meet with you as we prepare to study God's word. Um, we have a great lesson in store for us, and we're really looking forward uh, to some exciting activities and events that will be coming forth on this coming weekend. So let me just open up by sharing with you a couple of uh, housekeeping things, and then we will get into the word of, of God. <clears throat> I want to challenge us to be in continued prayer. Uh, we have to be honest. God has kept us, and God is keeping us even right now. And so as we pray uh, for one another, um, in our prayer time, let's first of all thank God for just being God. Then secondly, I want to ask you to ask him to cover us. Cover us with his blood. And then thirdly, I want you to ask God to guide our leaders, our president, our world leaders, our national leaders, uh, our state leaders, our local leaders. Ask God to guide our leaders in the decisions that they make and that they have to make for the betterment of us all. Our Sunday school is up and running. If you haven't been able to get in, uh, we welcome you to call the church office and we can give you some information relative to the men's class, the women's class, uh, marriage class, or our youth class. And I want to thank those teachers uh, that have been giving leadership and sharing each Sunday morning. You can also check out our website for current uh, information. You can also check out uh, calvarybcsa.org and I want to thank again Sister uh, Johnson for keeping us uh, up to speed and up to par. Uh, church phone number just in case you don't have it area code 210 222 1541 again 210 222 1541 one, if you haven't got a phone call from the church, if you have not received a phone call from the church or a ministry leader, please call us because we may not have accurate or current information. So if you haven't received a call from the church, please reach out to us uh, so that we can uh, perhaps cross-check with the information we have with your current uh, information. Um, and then I just want to challenge you, please reach out to one another. I think those members that have been certainly checking up on our elderly members, uh, thank you so very, very much. This coming Sunday, <clears throat> this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. This coming Sunday is Mother's Day, and I want to challenge you uh, to be a blessing uh, to the mother in your life. Be a blessing to that uh, special uh, woman in your life on this coming Sunday. This is Mother's Day weekend. But not only will, be, will we be celebrating Mother's Day weekend, uh, I'm so excited to be able to see some of you. Uh, but we will uh, be trying our initial praise in the parking lot. Praise in the parking lot. 
Uh, I know on this coming Sunday things will be a little crazy, so let me just kind of give you a breakdown. At 8 a.m., we'll have our live streaming, and, and I, I want to do that just to ensure that we reach all of our members that are in the virtual community. And then at 10 a.m., at 10 a.m., we will move to the parking lot, and at 10 a.m., we will start our praise in the parking lot. We'll probably have about one hour of service. We'll collect uh, tithes and offerings for those that want to worship by way of giving, and then we will <coughs> uh, give out Mother's Day gifts. And again, I think we have about 200 Mother's Day gifts uh, first come, first serve, first come, first serve, uh, Calvary. First come, first serve. Uh, and so, again, uh, we look forward to having a great time on Sunday. Sunday school will be at 930. So I know for some, you will not be able to do Sunday school and make the praise in the parking lot. It's kind of your choice. Uh, we had to kind of do it that way. I didn't want to be too early trying to have church in the parking lot to wake up our neighbors but then we can't wait too late because of the heat and so 10 o'clock hopefully we can get in before the sun uh, blasts out on us but again uh, 8 o'clock we'll do our virtual worship 9.30 Sunday school on Zoom <clears throat> and then 10 to 11 We'll have our praise in the parking lot. I uh, want to thank all of our teachers and school workers. Uh, this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and we know that our kids are not physically going to school, but we know that they are still uh, doing work that is being, being prepared and provided by uh, school teachers and school workers. And I, uh, I, I believe a lot of us, uh, some of our schools anyway, are still providing breakfast and lunch for our kids. And so I want to give a shout out to all of our school workers, all of our teachers, all of our educators, uh, janitors. Thank you so very much. And if any of you have a way of reaching them with the word of encouragement or being a blessing to them in some way or another, I want to challenge you to do so. And I think some of you parents, some of you parents, some of you parents that have had to uh, deal with your child or your children over these last couple of weeks, I think all of us will say this is true. Uh, thank God for teachers. I think all of us have a greater appreciation for teachers and educators. Calvary, I want to thank you again for your continued support and prayers of our church. I uh, want to challenge us to be wise and good stewards. Uh, be wise, be good stewards stewards of the resources uh, that you have. To my knowledge, uh, no one has been laid off, no one has lost their job, no one has been furloughed, at least to my knowledge, and we certainly thank God for that. Uh, in the next uh, coming days or so, I want, I'll be putting out something on the website relative to our finances, and, and I say that uh, because one of the uh, pieces I think that we've learned in this epidemic is we've got to be prepared for times like this with a savings. Amen. We got to have a savings. We got to be prepared for a rainy day. rainy day. We've got to be prepared for an epidemic. And so in the next coming uh, days or so, I'll be putting something on the website relative to our finances, but I thank you for your uh, support. Those of you that give regularly, thank you so very much uh, for your continued support of our ministry. And again, you can give uh, through our website, 
uh, Calvary BCSA, just check uh, the give section. Uh, we have two forms of, of giving there, uh, Givelify or PayPal. Or you can mail your gift in 6142 FM 78, San Antonio, Texas, 78244. Or you can certainly drop it off by the office. College kids, we know that 1st of May was college day. And uh, I do know uh, one of our seniors, uh, Brother Logan, uh, Theodric Logan graduate uh, will be graduating from Sam Houston High School. Uh, he has committed to, uh, I believe it's called Leeson uh, College up in California. Uh, so I know some of our other seniors are still wrestling and trying to decide. Uh, college kids, those if this is your senior year, not only uh, do I want to tell you to uh, get ready to lock down your college, but make sure you have uh, done all of your financial uh, paperwork. And if you have any questions or need any assistance, uh, Sister Gail Johnson is available. She also has some information on our website relative uh, to our, our scholarship uh, scholarships that are available so college kids come on get busy uh, believe it or not we know your your graduation and senior year did not uh, end uh, like you thought it would but guess what uh, this is just uh, a small phase as you begin really the next chapter or the next step in your life so uh, just want to encourage our college kids uh, to get busy and diligent. If there's anything we can do, please don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, our chairman of deacons, Brother Clarence Jackson, uh, will be uh, going into rehab uh, real soon. So we want to keep him um, <clears throat> lifted up in prayer. He is doing well in good spirits. But certainly we want to keep him lifted up in, in prayer. Also on tomorrow, uh, Sister Judy Brown. Sister Judy Brown will be undergoing surgery on tomorrow. Uh, let me, uh, I, I got a text uh, on today and I want to share that with you. Any of you that are interested in the COVID-19 testing, any of you that are interested in COVID-19 testing, um, there is a c company called Bright Star Care, and they will be testing at Praise Cathedral Church uh, right back here on uh, Ben's Engelman. And the uh, phone number that you can call to make an appointment, 1-800-604-1987. And again, that is 1-800-604-1987. 1987. And uh, we will have that information also in the church office uh, so you can call and get it uh, if you didn't get it uh, over the airwaves. Have one card of thanks uh, from Sister Josephine Barnes Parlor. And uh, certainly we thank you, Sister Josephine, for uh, that thank you, for this thank you card. All right, our birthdays. I uh, want to give a shout out to uh, Brother Howard Leak, who celebrated a birthday at the end of April. I believe it was end of April. Happy birthday, Brother Leaks, and uh, we trust and pray that you had a great day uh, as you celebrated your birthday. Uh, those of you that are celebrating anniversaries, uh, we thank God for uh, another year. Amen of holy wedlock. Amen. All right, I believe, I believe, I believe that is all. So let us prepare uh, to get into the word of God. <clears throat> we have a great lesson before us on tonight. A um, uh, lesson dealing with uh, forgive, forgive or forgiveness. Forgive or forgiveness taken from uh, the gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, 
verses 21 through 28, and then verses 32 through 35. Uh, For the sake of clarity, for the sake of clarity, I'm going to read verses 21 through 35. Verses 21 through 35, and uh, I'm going to do a whole lot of reading so I don't have to do a whole lot of teaching. And you'll be able to say, uh, he can't teach, but he can show read. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall, we, shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for so much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that they had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desires me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. And delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you. If ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brother their trespasses. For a few moments... I want to talk about forgive. Let us bow as we ask God to bless our time in his word and our time in study. Our Father and our God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. Thank you for bringing us and blessing us to this another hump day. We pray now, God, that as we study your word, as we share your word, I pray, O God, that saints would be strengthened, sinners might be saved. I pray that you would use this word, use this lesson to bless us, to challenge us, and to bring about a change within us. Thank you again for your word, for your word is truly a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Thank you in advance for what you're going to say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
We're in <clears throat> our Sunday school lesson. You, we, you know over the last couple of weeks, we have just been walking through our Sunday school lesson on Wednesdays. But I have to say that God has a sense of humor and God has a sense of timing. Because believe it or not, uh, starting uh, I think on in May, as we moved into this last portion, the, the 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 title is dealing with messy relationships. Dealing with messy relationships, and, and, and when I looked at that, I couldn't do nothing but really laugh, because. Over these last couple of weeks, we've had to deal with one another. We've had to live with, we've had to stay with, we've had to be with one another. And and so over these last couple of weeks, or next couple of weeks, we'll be dealing with issues of one another. Last week was encouragement, this week is forgiveness. Let's jump in. The question has to be raised. How many times are we to forgive one another? Does God expect us to forgive and forgive and forgive no matter the abuse no matter the number of times that wrong is done to us? Well, in our lesson, Jesus answers these questions and many others. Our lesson text opens with verse 21 of Matthew chapter 18. Opens with verse 21 of Matthew at chapter 18. And it opens with Peter asking Jesus a question. And if you got your Bibles, let's, let's just look at that question. Verse 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? And the real question, the real question, the real question that, 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 that Peter was, was really asking is, is forgiveness limited? The real question that Peter was asking, the real question that Peter uh, wanted to know the answer to is, is forgiveness limited? Now, now, Peter was generous in his forgiveness because to forgive someone seven times for wronging you, I think, is pretty, pretty generous. But look what Jesus does. Jesus answers and, and, and says, yes, Peter, we ought to forgive. But our forgiveness should not be limited. But it ought to be unlimited. P- Peter looked at forgiveness as that as being a limited thing. But, but, but Jesus says forgiveness should not be limited, but it ought to be unlimited. And then from verse 23 to verse 35, Jesus tells us this parable of the unforgiving servant. And before I jump into this parable, I want to just look at what Peter says, what Peter says. He says, should I forgive till seven times? And in verse 22, Jesus says, 
No, until seven times 70. Peter says, should, should, should I limit my forgiveness to seven times? But Jesus says, no, your forgiveness ought to be unlimited until 70 times seven, which is 490 times. And the point is this, forgiveness, you got to get this, forgiveness is really a matter of the heart and not a matter of the mind. Forgiveness really takes place in our heart and not in our heads because in our heads, we keep a track record of all the wrongs that have been done to us and who did them. That, that, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why some of us, we, we can remember and recall something that happened way back when. Because in our heads, we keep a track record. We keep a running record of all of the wrongs that have been done to us. But if you're going to have forgiveness, it doesn't take place in your head. But it takes place in your heart. Because the heart is willing to let it go. Now let me give you four reasons why the spirit of forgiveness knows no limits. Let me give you four reasons why the spirit of forgiveness knows no limits. Not number one, and, and I, I noticed what I called it, the spirit of forgiveness because number one, forgiveness is a spiritual thing. Forgiveness is a spiritual thing. And all spiritual things, like love, like joy, like peace, like grace, they know no limits. Now, I, I'm about to shout myself. All, all spiritual things like love, like joy, like peace, like grace, they know no limits. I, 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 let, let me just ask you, uh, out there in, 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 on, on the World Wide Web, any of you thank God that his grace is unlimited? We know that it's unmerited, but check this out. It's also unlimited. And so all spiritual things, like love, like, like thank God his love is unlimited. Thank, thank God that his joy is unlimited. That, that, thank God that his peace is unlimited. Thank God that his grace is unlimited. And, and so forgiveness is a spiritual thing. And because it's a spiritual thing, it knows no limit. And what does that mean? That means that it cannot be measured. It cannot be numbered. All we do is experience it, and then we're challenged to practice it. All we do is experience it. We experience his love. We experience his joy. We experience his peace. We, enjoy, we experience his, his grace. And then we've got to practice it. So, so number one, forgiveness is a spiritual thing. But number two, we can't have good human relationships without forgiveness. We can't have good human relationships without forgiveness. I say that because offending others is a common thing. Whether it happens at the church house or at your house. Because we, 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 we sometimes knowingly and a lot of times we are innocently offending one another. 
And how many times, how many times, now, 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 now if you did it purposefully, shame on you. But, but how many times have you innocently hurt somebody, didn't even know you did it, and days, weeks, and months, and sometimes years later, you cross paths with that person, and they go back to something that you did or something that you said, and you didn't even know you did it or said it. So, so, so sometimes we offend one another, sometimes knowingly, but sometimes we do it innocently. And here's the real issue. We're sinful. We're not perfect. So we can easily hurt or offend one another. Whether we do it accidentally or whether we do it purposely. So, 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 so number one, forgiveness is a spiritual thing. Number two, we can't have good human relationships without forgiveness. Number three, if we don't forgive, that means that we are self-centered. If we don't forgive. That means that we're self-centered. If we don't forgive, I, I don't just want to suggest that we are possibly self-centered, but I want to say this, and it may mean that we're spiritually immature. Because if you have an unforgiving spirit, that may be an indicator that you, may be, that you may need to really be growing up in Christ. And we know that a whole lot of people grow old, but they don't always grow up. So, 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 so uh, if we don't forgive, that means that we are, we are self-centered. Uh, number two, uh, we can't have good human relationships. Without forgiveness, number one, forgiveness is a spiritual thing. But, but, but watch this, number four. Peace and health can only be achieved through forgiveness. Peace and health can only be achieved through forgiveness. Unforgiveness causes all kinds of disturbances. And all kinds of divisions. Whether it's at the church house. Or even at your house. Whether it's in a ministry or even in our family. Whether it's, it's, it's in, on, on our jobs. Or even in our communities. Unforgiveness causes so much division. And disturbance. Well, 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 let's, let's, let's look. Let's look at this parable. God is the forgiving, generous, loving king. And verse 23 says that one of the things that he does as king is he takes account of his servants. What does that mean? That, that means that every now and then, God looks at us and he inspects what he expects. Every now and then, he looks at us, one and all, and he inspects what he expects. And according to this text he inspects us one and all the point is all of us will have to give an account you, you may not be accountable to your pastor you may not be accountable to your ministry leader you may not be accountable to nobody else, 
But according to this text, verse 23, all of us will have to give an account unto God. And the reason we got to give an account unto God is because we all owe God. Can I just pause and, and just tell you my testimony? I owe him everything. And if the truth be told, we are all debtors because we owe God. Now, now, now watch the text. Because not only are we in debt, but, but according to the text, we're really bankrupt. We got a debt that we can't pay. And let me stop here and say, that's what sin does in our lives. It, it, it breaks us. Now, 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 it may not necessarily break us financially, but it'll break us spiritually, it'll break us emotionally, it can break us morally. And then look, in verse 25, our sins can also affect our family. Because the Bible says that his wife and his kids were put up for sale because of the man's debt. Now, now look what the man does in verse 26. This man, he has some spiritual sense. He's before the king of kings. He's in debt. He's bankrupt. He's messed up his family. But notice what he does. He cries for mercy. He cries for mercy. Now, now, I know the King James Version says patience, that he cries for patience. But, but what, he, what he's really asking for is mercy and compassion. And the Bible says that God was moved with love and forgiveness. And think about this. It took God calling him to give an account to get this man's attention. Can I tell you today that God uses all kind of things to get our attention? He uses trouble. He uses trials. He uses tragedy. God uses all kind of things to get our undivided attention. Now, verses 29 through 31, verses 29 through 31, they aren't part of our lesson, but, but, but you've got to look at them. Because this same man who had to give an account who, 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 who was, 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 was bankrupt, messed up his family, but he cried out for mercy. God showed him mercy. But this same man, the, the text says, Verses 29 through 31, not really part of your lesson, but you, you check it out. He went out and found a man who owed him a little money. And, and, and when he found him, the Bible says, y'all check it out. The Bible says he jacked him up. Simply, he wanted to squeeze out of the man what the man owed him. And because the man didn't have what he owed him, the text says that he had him put in jail. He did not hear 
the man's cry for mercy or forgiveness, although the Lord had heard his cry for mercy and forgiveness, and he had forgiven him. But, but I believe, I believe, I believe the story picks, picks up, and here's the point, in verse 31. I believe it, it doesn't say it, but I believe it alludes to the fact that others had saw how he had been forgiven. But then they saw how he had treated this other man. And, and when they saw how he treated this other man, he, he jacked him up, tried to squeeze out of him whatever he could get out of him, had him jailed. Others went straight to the Lord and told the Lord how he had treated this man. And when you pick back up with our lesson in verse 32, God is so mad that he calls this man wicked. And, and you know what wickedness is? Wickedness is when we fall short of what God is. Wickedness is when we fall short of what God is. And, and there are two things that really make God mad. There are two things that really make God mad. And that is, number one, when we don't believe in him. And number two, when we're not compassionate. There are two things that really make God mad. Number one, when we don't believe in him. And number two, when we're not compassionate. I hear you. You're saying, well, pastor, what's the punchline of this story? Here's the punchline of this story. If we don't forgive, or for some of us, if we can't forgive others, then God won't forgive us. Whether it be won't or can't, if we won't, if we can't forgive others, then God won't forgive us. Have, having a forgiving spirit is so important. It's so important I believe that's why God talked about it and taught about it over and over and over again. God says, if you want to receive my forgiveness, then you've got to be willing to forgive one another. And my brothers and sisters, as I wrap up this little lesson and we prepare for our question of the day, what a great time to think about who we need to forgive. I mean, we're forced and we're stuck to deal with one another. But who is it that we need? to forgive. Let us bow. God, our Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this lesson, such a rich lesson, such a rich word, practical word. Because all of us struggle and wrestle, we've been hurt. We've been done wrong. But help us to have a heart of compassion like you. And not to Hold and calculate all the wrongs that we have been done. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness. For you have forgiven us. You have cleansed us from all of our unrighteousness, all of our wickedness, all of our sinfulness. And Lord, we thank you. Help us, oh God, to do in the lives of others what we ourselves have experienced from you. 
And Lord, I want to just tell you, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Sister Ebene. All right, hey, Facebook. Say hey, Facebook. Hey, Facebook. <laughs> Okay, so once again, we are back with a quick check-in with our pastor, and we just want to, you know, see how he's doing with this quarantine. And once again, I told y'all last week we were doing some work in the church, so let me show you. We are done, and we are going to get the chairs and everything set back up in the sanctuary. So, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. We're just going to do a little cleaning. So this week, we have one question, one question only. We understand that everything is getting ready to open back up. Some people have mixed reviews for it. Some people are really excited about it. I know in my household, my sister does hair, so she's so happy she's ready to go back. So um, just in a church setting, a lot of people have gotten very comfortable worshiping online or worshiping uh whether it's through the TV, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. So we know a lot of people have gotten comfortable. But tonight, we've discussed it before. We just want to touch on it again. Pastor, how important is it for us as Christians to make sure that we assemble ourselves and fellowship with like-minded believers? I think in the Bible, there are so many verses, Old Testament and New Testament, uh, that challenge us. Uh, to come into the house of God where we can meet the presence of God. Psalms 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, uh, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some do. Watch this. As we see the day approaching, uh, I think, uh, virtual church uh, has been a tremendous blessing and believe it or not uh, some of our churches have grown smaller churches that only uh, may physically have uh, had 75 members they've gone up to 300 members doing virtual church I don't think virtual church will go away matter of fact even with our audio visual people I'm even challenging them uh, to find better ways to get the word out about what we're doing here at Calvary. But, but I will challenge us uh, by saying that uh, Sheets Methodist and Bedside Baptist, amen, uh, is not an alternative when, when you can make it into the house of God. So many things positive happen when we gather together we're strengthened we're we're encouraged uh we 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 sometimes we're blessed just by seeing somebody else especially when you know they've been through a storm so so uh i'm a, I, I can't wait amen until we are able to gather together again now i, I know probably the spin off of that question is, what do I think with the mayor, I mean, with the governor, if you notice, uh, our mayor and our governor and our uh, county commissioner are not really seeing eye to eye. Uh, I believe our governor, and this is just me, I'm not a politician, but I believe he's putting wealth over health. And we've got to be so very, very, very careful because uh, and I don't want to become racial, but, but this coronavirus, COVID-19, is really hitting black and brown communities real hard. So with that, uh, I, I told them uh, this uh, uh, on this past weekend, and, and then I, I'll leave it alone. I told them this on this past weekend. I played baseball. Believe it or not, I may not look like it now, but I did play baseball uh, and, and I learned in baseball that you, you, you got three strikes and you're out. Well, well, I, 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 Calvary, we already got two strikes. Number one, we black. Number two, we old. We don't need the third strike. And so with that said, as much uh, uh, as I want to see you and as hard as it is loving you from a distance, uh, we're going to kind of 
push this thing out and wait and see uh, this, the numbers kind of decline before we invite you in uh, because uh, I'm concerned not just about our elderly members, but I'm also concerned about our young members. And if you watch the report on today, uh, this disease is doing some strange things with our young people. So I would prefer to err uh, on the side of caution than to be spiritual and run out here and talk about God got us. Yeah, God got us, but God gives us common sense as well. So until we can gather uh, together again, stay tuned, stay in touch, love one another, and, and you know your pastor loves you, and anything that we can do, we're just a phone call away. Be blessed. May the Lord keep you until we meet again. Okay, thank you so much. And just one more thing, Pastor. I, yes. We have been doing really good as far as getting our views up. Uh, we do live stream from YouTube. And so uh, what we're going to do this Sunday, very special, this Sunday, yes. something special for Mother's Day, we are actually going to have church in the parking lot. Yes. And we are so excited because this will be our first time outside ministering. So we are going to start promptly at 10 o'clock. I will be going live again from uh, the Calvary's Facebook page. So you will be able to see it live from the page. Um, but for anyone that wants to come, please come pull up, stay in your car. We have speakers and everything outside. So you will be able to hear the sermon. You do not have to get out your car at all. Just come pull up and be blessed. Uh, our choir, our singers, uh, I don't know if we've given them a, a title yet, but our, our singers, they have something special planned. It's called well. the COVID choir. The COVID <laughs> choir. There you go. And then I passed the, the course. Choir. He'll have an amazing sermon from on high. Amazing sermon from yes. on high that he'll have out there. So we're going to start promptly at 10 o'clock. We won't stay long because y'all know Pastor be sweating. <laughs> so yes. Yes. we don't want him to fall out of anything. So Sunday morning, we will go live uh, at 8 a.m. Regular church will be in the sanctuary. We'll go live and then we'll move, transition to outside in the parking lot at 10 o'clock. So feel free to start coming up here before 10. We'll be setting up. Uh, like I said, we'll have speakers every you won't have to get out your car thank you so much for tuning in this week thank you again pastor for allowing us Bless to do you. this we pray y'all all are blessed and safe and have a good night all right benediction and now may the grace of god sweet communion of the holy spirit let it rest rule and abide with each of us henceforth now and forevermore amen